Please give a warm round of applause. Guten Morgen, liebe Leute. Guten Morgen, Hamburg. Good morning, dear listeners. Good morning, Hamburg. It's yeah. wonderful here. What I brought to you is not so nice, but it's curious and funny. The whole thing is based on a few, on a few slides that were on a few slides that were published by Edward Snowden, and I correlated them and. In Wien sind die überall. Ich schicke mal out how daraus. in Vienna are the posts of the NSA. In Vienna are living 17,500 accredited diplomats. There is an ambassador on national level. There is a U.S. ambassador at the United Nations, and there is an U.S. ambassador at the OSCE. And if you multiply everything which is in the embassy by three, then you see that the location in Vienna is bigger than even even than New York. Yeah. Hier haben wir mal, hier haben wir die gefragte Here we have the questioned slide. The slides are, are more or less a memoir because the narrative is told in pictures. I will zoom it in so that you can read it. In the title you see on the non-redacted things there is Vienna, and there is the Vienna Annex, and on the right-hand side you have a list which sees foreign set and several cryptonyms, and there is also a station in it. Also, all right. This is the NSA station. Obviously, that's just the the roof bit. Oops, oops, not showing up. See it on my screen. Yeah. Right. No. Can I die Regie da etwas machen? Ich weiß nicht. Die habt hier vor mir auf dem Schirm. Okay, da muss ich's haben. Ah, that's how I have to do it. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. Okay. We have here. All right, this. That's the roof construction on the embassy in the U.S. in, in Vienna. This is the old version. Let, let me show you the new version. This is okay. That's all right. Now I'm getting the hang of it. So. This is the old one. Here we go. So, during my research, the Austrian reporters tried to look inside using infrared. Two, two weeks later, a crane came and, uh, and you know, covered the whole thing in a high, high reflectivity cover. And that's the equipment which, which is used by the Vienna station underneath. Well, you can imagine what they're doing inside. So that's what it looks like in the flesh. There it is, that's the embassy building. Otherwise, you don't see much on the building, nothing special. So it's just really that weird house. Let's look at where it's looking. If you zoom in here, then you can see on the horizon very feebly small tower at the very top on the horizon. That will matter. It's a you know, radio antenna. I will explain what that's all about. That's the Vienna station. So what are the other stations that should be mentioned? What's the Vienna Annex? Well, for a long time we believed... Can't see it clearly. 
lange glaubt, for a long time we believed. So, so once again, there's a, the explanation, the specifications. Since on the embassy, there's there's another 400 megahertz. Uh, the the four stage uh, uh, antenna, but they're sort of. Yeah, antennas, but they uh, can send in all directions. So this is used by all the uh, security service. Then there's the next station, the NSA station, which uh, is which we thought it was was the Vienna annex. Next folder. All right, next folder. Das ist das Ding hier. That's this thing right here. No, das ist mir noch nicht wirklich. Einfach darüber schimpfen? Ja. Okay. All right. Dann sind wir schon hier. Also, Here we are. Das ist die NSA Villa, das ist eine Villa, the NSA Villa. It's the Villa in the 18th level. It's above Vienna, a great uh, radio location. So that's the sort of uh, certificate of the house. So since 71, it's very old. It's the second oldest, second oldest embassy location after the embassy itself in Vienna. Right? So schaut das Ding That's aus. what it looks like. Sind jede At the top, Menge there's so loads of weird things. We're not quite sure what's being used. It all looks, looks very legacy. The really interesting bit is after the, uh, behind the facade, well, we think there's the same equipment which is also on top of the house and the embassy. But that wasn't very exciting so far. We already knew about this. All right, let's, let's look at this. Well, I measured here using a Fink simulation program. What, what, how is, where could you reach from the villa using two gigahertz? And as you can see, you have, you can cover a huge portion of Vienna. And at the very bottom, where it becomes weaker, there's already the uh, the airport. So th that thing is, it's in an excellent place for radio. So the NSA villa, once upon a time, was once upon a time just a regular analog surveillance post in Vienna. Well, otherwise, they claim, according to the claims of the embassy, they, um, open source they do open source intelligence. Well, that means they look at television and newspapers. Well, that's all I want to say about that. Right. Struggling a bit here. So, next this. Right, next yeah, thing. thing. I want to show this as well. Uh, sorry, I have to move it again over here. What's happening? Das gehört groß. Das ist nur das. Das habe ich nur deswegen hier, weil das ein. Das ist das Besondere. The only reason I have it here. This is the special thing about this location. You can see over here. It's the only place where where they have uplink and downlink satellite dishes. Nowhere else I found I found such dishes. Which means. So this means this is a standard piece of equipment normally on every embassy. It's in, in Geneva, they have it in the UN mission, there's two such things on the roof. That's the, that's the internal direct communication link, so completely standard but with all embassies. These, they're in this villa, in this random villa, it's slightly hidden. They used to have it elsewhere. And these locations, which I will, I'll show you now where the, these used to be. So. Come here, it's with the Taruba, sir. Here. So, right. here's in there. Here we are. Let's get him a few photos. Weiter. Jetzt komme ich right. schon There's zurück. a lot of pictures. I think so. I'll manage from here. Here. That's what's rüber jetzt, oder? Passed. All right. Du mir nur schwer, ich sehe da nicht hin mit den Brillen. <lacht> das ist mein Glas, ich kann nicht quite sehen. Mach mir es einfach nur groß. Just a larger, ja, please. Okay. All right. Ja, sehr schön. Thank you very much. <lacht>
<laughs> also, was Sie hier sehen, All right, what you can see here is the uh, United Nations complex in Vienna, these buildings right here. Und hier ist noch ein And there's another building here. Dieser Tower This ist tower right here IZD -Tower. is the so-called EZD Tower. Der Botschaft That's the location of the embassy of the US, the US with the United Nations. So look at that picture. So underneath the United Nations and in the above three levels, the US mission. I think this picture says everything. So, all right. Here we are. Once again in the EZD Tower. This is the index of the levels on the lift, as you can see. 2237. And the last entry is in the 34th level. That means no such agency here. No such agency here. At the top levels, where it says, welcome to EZD, there should be US mission, but they were truthful, they wanted to display it. As you can see, the stars, they uh, managed to put the stars in, 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 but they put, weren't able to put the stripes in. All right. What's on the roof? Ah, once again, this cute little house. This time, even in a climatized version. This little bit in front of it. You can see on the other side, there's another one. That thing is climatized. The roof, it's hermetically sealed. It's just from the embassy, from the mission. You can only reach it from the, from the mission via the nose of it. So you can't even relieve it. If you look exactly on the roof, there's once again this circular emitter. That's their internal communication link. All right. Here we have the little roof from a completely different perspective. That's 150 meters up from a completely different angle. As you can see here, there's the second uh, Second entry, there's the exit, and on the other side, there's the uh, air input, air inflow. There's no, those are not antennas. As you can see here, there's the cameras, and up there, there's a dish. That dish is not a surveillance dish, but that's, that's an AstraZat dish. What does that tell us? The US mission. They're not UPCT cable uh, customer since they have the whole, um, why had the whole tower using their cable vision? All right, these pictures are pretty interesting. From above, you can see, well, no one thought of looking at this before, even though it has been existing for 10 years. All right, you can see a little bit more exactly what it is. But that's how we could identify it. There you know, could be certain dipoles, and we can guess about the frequency. It's about 500 megahertz. So a, around the NATO tetrafunk frequency range. So something like that they'll use, they are using. All right, let's move on. Here you can see the ascent to the um, building. And you can only access it from behind. There are two lifts. They all come from the subterranean garage. And two lifts are completely exclusive for the US uh, representatives. The one doesn't completely go up. So not everyone in the US representation can go to the top. Not a surprise. Different levels, security levels, security levels clearances. That's why some can go in, some can't. Yeah. Right. In what, in what happened, happened there is the following. Why is the 34th floor free? Why the tower has been filled until the last story? Uh, many moved out after it. The Austrian power grid was direct on the story below it. They moved voluntarily in the midst of the tower the firma Baxter, which was in the 34th floor, moves in another tower right next to each other. 
Why is it happening? There is a simple cause for that, because their cell phones weren't working. There are large-scale radio destruction, disturbations that uh, led to misfunctioning of the cell phones and therefore they moved out. What I heard from the people was only, not only the cell phones aren't working, but for a short amount of town, short amount of time is GSM 900 and GSM 1800. UMTS is not working. And simultaneously the UKW radio is not working. What can it be? It's the same phenomena that my friends and radio amateurs are observing at the airport that when the American limousines arrive, then the traf air traffic controllers are sweating because everything is shaky and no radio is operating. They have jammers there against improvised bombs from the Iraq. They built a very large series of that. They are ultra-wideband scanners and they are really well because they even disturb UKW radio. It, they are, it's really good equipment because they are always in use when high-ranked officials are arriving. So, da. so, here's the house hier. again. Und jetzt sind wir now dabei. Was in we are guessing what is inside that building. Sind solche von are dieser, such von dishes of that sort, if you look at it, eh aus so einer Bude zu stammen, das that Foto. seems from such a um, company sind, um, die that are that they are programmable onto GSM 800, GSM 900, 1800, and so they can use both American and European frequency. They are really flexible. These thing feeds the antenna into the dish and then emits that needs to be the equipment which is in there because we saw it also in Norway and Sweden they operate very broad radio intelligence in the mobile networks at place. They do network mapping, they collect network identifiers, they collect, they scan for different um, end user devices. It is, seems to be a routine operations. Was immer geht, werden sie passiv machen. They are doing it passive because IMC catchers are easily detected and people using crypto phones are easily visible. In Norway and Sweden, they were, they found it in large scale that crypto phones are used in Norway and Sweden and even in Vienna. If the special collection office is operating on one place in the world, then it is in Vienna because in Vienna there is the International Atom Agency, there are the talks with the Iran, there is the OSZE in Berlin, according which works on the Ukrainian crisis. It reminds us of the in time of times of the Cold War. If there is a cause to use it anywhere than in Vienna, there's high-profile targets in Austria. Specialists are deployed there instead of um, full take on fibers. There is no central central node in the network. There's only some points of presence of telecoms to collect it, but the 
a large scale of data is not be able to collect it there. About 70% are going towards Frankfurt, on to the D6 in Frankfurt. Then they are sitting in Darmstadt in the dagger complex and are retrieving the data anywhere. A business is emerging and the business object in Austria, I will present it at the very last. This is the ESAD tower. These locations, what I told you, they are looking at each other. Direct uh, high bandwidth net links are possible. It is easily possible to transfer data from one station to another. For that, you are needing relay stations. In former times, the NSA Villa took that role. Today, there is a nicer relay station, and I will show you now. The paradox thing about this thing is, it's actually part of the wide network. This slide is especially interesting. It contains all the information I just talked about. They cover all the bands, including GSM, uh, UKV, everything. You can configure them in various configurations, including focus, range, and everywhere. It's specialized to be put in one of these boxes, um, and apparently these devices are standardized across all um, NSA outposts. So what I just showed you today is probably also the same thing they run in Berlin, and it's also clear that uh, depending on where it's directed, um, it will also communicate with other um, entities. Pilzenaltner, a politician from the Green Party, has always been saying that the NSA Villa has been watching one of the Etzelberg houses, houses on the Etzelberg. So we're wondering, why would they want to watch it? Let's look at it. Let's look at the kind of bands they use on this hill. So, next folder. Um, next folder. So, here. Here we go. And now over. So. All right. Here we have the same picture as before. Let's zoom a little bit in and let's see if you can detect it. There's this tiny vertical line. I don't know if you can see it. Look at it. I don't know if you can identify it. That's the thing. That is a radio tower in Exel, uh, on the hill of Exelberg. It was built in the 60s. It uh, has been obsolete rather quickly. It's a 7.4 gigahertz um, antenna. It's an emergency um, band for the Austrian government. It goes from Vienna to Salzburg through all of Austria. This band would be used in a case of emergency for communication. For example, if they would be required to hide in a atomic shelter or and these antennas these sehen die schauen nach wien rein also wir blicken jetzt these antenna directed towards vienna and let's look at these antennas besonders würde ich mal sagen they're not really special antennas <laughs> they're quite 
da unten. Ja. Das ist schon ziemlich räudig. Das ist zwar nur die Verkleidung. Jetzt, warum sollte, sollten so now why should genau auf die Bude da drauf schauen? All the NSA houses um, direct the, the antennas towards this tower. There's nothing interesting on there. Everything is just backup services and airport security backup. And it's just a backup. So you don't even, you probably don't need to use it. You can get it in many other places as well. The thing is, if you think, the, it, most people think if there's an antenna directed towards something, the NSA is interested in spying on it. But you're not allowed to forget that they also need a broadband uplink. So right now we're just speculating, of course. We'll get towards the measurements later. So I'm presuming these two sets of antennas are the important part for the story. Luckily, these dishes always, if you look at these dishes, they always unveil where they're directed and what kind of band they're using. They always have to look somewhere. These antennas um, are directed towards Vienna. Let's see what the mapping looks like. So. All right. Can you see? It's a D tower. You see the IZD tower and the UN buildings, the American embassy and the NSA villa, and in the back the tower, the Atzelberg um, radio tower. We have seen Google Maps. This is built. Have I done it? Nachgeb in Google 3D nachgebaut and then rebuilt this in Google 3D and. Uh, you're able to see that the nose of the ISC tower clearly looks towards to the tower. So this was mean, it must be their broadband network connection. And just located, it must be smartly designed, they must have chosen these points uh, in a way or under the point that they're easily connectable to each other. These points are really high up, so there's not a single point in Vienna that's not, uh, which can't be reached. So what are they using these points for? Right, they are perfect to, to perfect to transport um, data that you just took from the UN complex and um, transfer them back to the US. So this point pretty much is perfect to filter out UN data, so I just assume it must be used for it. It's just too perfect. And this is probably a triangle in which they send around the data. So the pathfinding is probably done in the top tower of in the top part of the IC tower. And uh, I think this because of rumors that they constantly expanding uh, this center. So they started with one story and now then uh, three of them. In the beginning of the year. Even though the tower is only 10 years old, um, they got a completely new air conditioning system. They are also posted this on Facebook and uh, it was transported there by helicopters. So I can only assume they're extending their data um, processing system. Especially, nobody would exchange a climate system after only 10 years if you wouldn't have changed something in the heat output. So, it's quite likely that the data processing is done in the top of the ISZD tower and it's constantly extended. 
The architect of the tower um, put out a job offer on Facebook. And uh, even the press jumped onto it. Because if, if it's on Facebook, even the normal press can research this. And they were looking for an Austrian guy who is um, quite skilled in, in uh, technological matters. And um, so he was looking for a guy who could support the Americans with their endeavor to extend their base. So this must clearly be a hint, there's something going on, and this is, uh, is much bigger than the stuff that went on with the NSA Villa. And back when the whole NSA Villa thing came up, uh, American, the Americans said um, to the press or to the people that they should not be worried about it too much because they'll probably give it up soon. And it's probably clear why. The NSA villa is nicely located but still in the forest, so it's not that good for a broadband connection. The number of people going up into the ICD tower is increasing. So it looks like the NSA Villa um, employees are slowly moving into the ICD tower. So it looks like the data processing is also from in the basement of the NSA Villa is slowly moved into the tower as well. So these are all the things from 2013. All right, here we have another thing. So, once again, an open street map, you can see it even better. All right, as you can see, ISDD Tower to Ixelberg, there's just a single line. It's like directly over the top of the villa. As I said, that's what it looks like. So I'm convinced that in direction here in the city center, there's additional branches. I'm sure there are some interesting data to exfiltrate. Well, I've heard that the Americans, they are less interested in the Austrian government, but more important things, i.e. the United Nations. That's why they're putting all this effort in. Not, not because they like the coffee in Vienna. That's the point. That's what we managed to figure out. What they do is obvious. It's obviously had to do something to do with mobile uh, data. So everything else wouldn't make any sense in this situation well, if you put under other equipment in there. So it's very obvious that the NSA uh, dishes in the NSA Villa are blink or don't blink. Since si signal intelligence, they do it elsewhere, which is I'm going to show you now. Auch in Wien. Also in Vienna. Nicht in Wien, sondern etwas außerhalb. Actually not in Vienna, but slightly outside. Und zwar. All right. So, jetzt muss ich das wieder rüberschieben. Rejig it slightly. So. Nein. Ich muss das groß machen. Right, I have to enlarge this. Kannst du mir das groß machen? Ich sehe da einfach nicht hin. Links. <laughs> ja, passt. Okay, das ist der Grundbuch aus. All right, once again, here's a certificate of a station, Königswarte, which is a station directly on the Slovakian border. As you can see, I'll show you what it looks like. As we can see, uh, Republic of Austria is. You know, it belongs to the belongs to the military. Six thousand two hundred square meters. And um, at some time, 1981 was it was bought. So it's an old listening post of the Americans. That was the Warsaw uh, Alliance border. So it's it's one uh, kilometer from the Warsaw Curtain. So that's where they had their radio surveillance. And the Slovakians were sitting on a hill five five kilometers on the other side, and they had theirs on the other side. So 
alte Fade, kalte Kriegsspiele. Uh, these are the old sort of war games. So, well, once the Cold War was over, suddenly they had a sort of radio surveillance point, but all around was, there was only NATO, so Hungary, Slovakia, Czechoslovakia. Well, hmm, so they were wondering, should we surveil the NATO? Nah, let's do something else. And that's what they're doing right now. Well, they built a little, a few things there. So those are the objectives. Those are the data links of uh, civil uh, communication satellites. So this is a very new model. So this is SATKA satellite. It's a completely data only. Um, so this is not TV at all. Um, but this is not. This one only has only data. The cool thing is, you can change the dishes, so you can uh, configure the uh, illumination areas, so you can say, oh, all right, well, let's put the uplink to Afghanistan and then send the downlink to, to the net. That's exactly what they're for, and for exactly this thing they're being used for. All right, I'll show you the slides later, they're more for reading. Ah, Aha. here we are. That's what's there now. As you can see, a very impressive uh, set of mirrors. We will we'll see in a moment how big they are. So, in total, there's 18 of them. We can only see a part here. So, these are the most exterior ones. So, these three, these are, these are, especially these two, they look very far to the east, very far. I guess approximately about 20 degrees uh, east, uh, west to about 60 degrees east. We'll see it again in a moment. Uh, here you can see the uh, comparison of the size. As you can see, they're pretty big. That little car over there, this little SUV right there, if you zoom in a little bit, there's a you know a number plate for a, your Austrian army. You know, was casually happened to be uh, taking a picture. And uh, did, uh, did a colleague of mine, and they uh, they have a very sort of romantic view over the uh, piece of Austria. And you know, as it happened, this thing was next to it. Oh, well, you know, this could be interesting for Eric. So uh, here we go. And that's how I got these pictures. That's how it be began in the summer. All right. Uh -huh. Go back one. Yeah, here we go. So if you look at this, that's the, that stuff here, that's not cheap. These dishes are all heated. They all have automatic uh, uh, adjustment uh, motors. They have two sets of sensors. So let's see if you can see. So look if you can see them. They're slightly hidden on the borders and the edges. So these sensors, they measure the humidity and the temperature. And once the humidity sensor senses a little bit of water on the lens, so we have to add these Cassegrain type mirrors which means signal processing does not happen up there, but behind the antenna. So that means the antenna are, are sort of sent through to the lens system behind the antenna and used, they're uh, processed there. So what's different, different with the other types of mirrors where at the front there's a processing unit. In these cases, it's behind. So these have to, every 15 minutes, you will see, you hear the motors moving. Since the third sensor is a sat tracker, it says, oh, the satellite 
is, is moving in a little figure of eight, uh, you have to adjust automatically. Well, as you can imagine, there's quite a bit of uh, controlling uh, sensing. There's a whole, there's a whole rack. It's slightly high, taller than me. So once the humidity sensor senses a little bit of humidity on the mirror, the nothing has is allowed to be wet. The immediately there's a hot air and a hot air jet to blow off uh, the humidity from the lens so that it once again shines. That means these things consume a ridiculous amount of energy, even if they're just reception antennas. So I calculated what it might cost to use them. And I used it using the Swiss Onyx stations, who also have one of these Echelon type stations. Uh, so I uh, estimated it based on that. They, uh, they cost about, about 200 million Swiss francs, so they, that's what they used. So this thing, it's much more modern. So once upon a, we probably don't need as big mirrors as you needed 15 years ago. So maybe you can subtract a bit, but below 150 million, you definitely uh, won't be able to do this with all the little bits and pieces that belong. And it carries on. So in the, in the full beauty, you can't see it from these pictures. So there's a, there's a close-up. So why do they have ladders there? They, they, you know, they don't belong to the antennas. They have the ladders there since... Well, I work for a for an entity, uh, for an entity. They have a lot of satellite technology, and um, uh, and the experts said, and they explained me to me. They have there have to be a lot of ladders there. Why? They have to continuously readjust it. So, for example, they get an order. Uh, needs, we want that, or we want this. So then they go up there and they change a few things, focus it, refocus it. The mirrors are that accurate that you need at least one day until you are tuned to a single satellite. It's like, it's like a massive telescope where you are trying to uh, hit a very small, small window. Otherwise, you don't know where you are. So that's what these mirrors are like. They're not, they're not, they're not, it's not like the satellite is saying, oh, here's the Eutelsat, here's my data. So you have a satellite, but you don't know what satellite it is. So they are very, very, very close to each other, at least, you know, less than two degrees at the, there's a lot of geostationary satellites. They're all around the equator. And these dishes look at one after the other. So this station is not insulated. It's not on its own. It's part of the US Echelon system. There is no satellite espionage station which is on its own. It's co completely uh, foolish to think about that. You have need at least four or five of these in a row on the various uh, latitudes. So now imagine Phoenix uh, Ward 17 degrees east, Bad Eibling 10 degrees east, Schöningen 18 degrees east, Bad Eibling and Schöningen, they're together, put together, they're about as big as this Königswald. Just to imagine what kind of size it has, that's what we can once again see uh, from a, a, a few more um, yeah. Air photography is what's now. So this is uh, two data links. So these are terrestrial data links. And you can see, <laughs> using the people, how big they are. So this model right here has five meters of diameter. And it's the biggest model that the, f the firma even builds and de delivers. So this data link goes far north to a military location where there's also aerial surveillance. And this thing has to go over 40 kilometers, and that's why it's so big. So this other one points directly to the airport Svechet and to the uh, uh, barracks behind it. So that's maybe, I'm not sure what, what's happening on these links, but they belong to the, probably belong to the Austrians. 
Das Bundesheer hatte im Übrigen einen Federal extremen Sparkurs aircraft. während der letzten Jahre. They had a während der letzten vier Monate gab es nur cost reduction program darüber, and there were many discussions about that there's enough for the fuel of the Eurofighter jets and for aircraft airspace surveillance. The estimated operation costs of Königswarte are 10 million per year estimated from the Swiss coasts. It uses power you can't imagine. So we are now looking at some others. So. So, das hier these are ist, die war ein bisschen schwieriger zu machen. It was a little bit more difficult to take this shot. Ja, luftgestützt geht's dann. It was done from the das air. Ist It is south. They are all looking at south in the southern direction. Auf einer Reihe und sie picken they are all lined up in one row and they are picking up some of the sets. Für sie von which Interesse are interesting sind. to them. Only for information. Uh, das Ding sieht These, bis Afghans it sings, sees bis until Afghan satellites and Pakistan set. It sees half northern Africa, half of the Far East. There were are no fast data links. Telecoms are using it, especially mobile data network operators, to do roaming, where there are no good cable connections. The delay is usually not a problem for such connections. It's usually not important to such connections. During the last 10 years, SAT internet connections had a massive boom. Every ship in the Mediterranean, which has internet access, uses a satellite connection. Every ship in the Persian Gulf uses satellite uplinks from here. And here are they intercepting the data. Here are they getting the real interesting things. If you are doing foreign surveillance, then it should be at least targeted. It's not untargeted. They take it full, they record metadata from the North African telecoms here. It is targeted. The building was painted with a radio absorbing material. On the last photo there were construction. Signs of construction on the last photo. Here sieht man es aus dem Osten. We are viewing it from the east now. The boy with his um, aircraft was nearly inside the Slovakia. Here you are looking at three big dishes. One of it, I think, the middle one is looking at Turaya 2, a um, telephone satellite from Abu Dhabi. Jo, und jetzt schauen wir noch, da ist noch nämlich noch was zu sehen. Das sieht man von außen überhaupt nicht. At something which is not visible from the east, you can go around and there's even a viewing platform which Austria is the only country with a uh, sightseeing platform where you can look at the antennas. It is a hiking area like the Teufelsberg in Berlin. You see that there must be something subterranean. For example, a maintenance entrance. There is a thing with power supply. It is no flower boxes. It is air outflows. There are air intakes. And here, there is an entrance to the subterranean garage. You have to look it from, from an aerial photo because it is not accessible from, from the surface. There must be some installation below it. They 
need to have something there to for processing and signal processing for the data which they are acquiring. It is linked up with fiber optic cables like all Unsere Standorte sind like all sides of the okay. Federal Army. In some um, presentation, the Federal Army said that all sites are enabled with glass fiber optic links. Look at how many air condition is there. Three on the roof, one in the middle where there is a hole to for air exchange, for heat. and there is even construction going on in the lower part of the picture. It is at least 1,500 square meters of bunker in one story. Of course, underneath every military building there are bunkers. This, it is easily to detect military installations because they have a huge basement made of concrete. So, das war's in so that's etwa, it, ich. in it, in circa? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. Jetzt muss ich noch mal All right. Zu den Now I have to go back to the slides. Now we'll come to the conclusion part of the talk. Na. This is here. Let's yeah. see. Uh -huh. There we go. Yeah. I found it. I have to go back one. All right. All right. Don't worry. I have it. Also, here have I in All right. The Österreicher and the Technik, ne? The Austrians and technology. Ich sehe schlecht, ich sehe ganz einfach schlecht dahin und ich yeah, just have a problem seeing it. Uh, oh, no. All right, no, no, now. Let's put this the most. Please, back to the slides. Oh, all right, thanks. The young people, they know how to work it. <laughs> Sorry, Leute, aber... Sorry. Immerhin, man hat die Fotos sehen können. Also hier sehe ich... At least you can see the photos. All right. Can you see one of these Snowden slides uh, of the approved signal intelligence partners? And now, why is Austria on there? Well, you've just seen it. It's pretty clear if you look at all the facilities they have. Station Königswarte findet sich oft auch auf der ersten Folie wieder. The station Königswarte is. Um, Often found on the first slides um, under one of the um, cryptonymic name. So we're not really sure which it is, but it, we're pretty sure it must be one of them. Um, and another one is probably uh, but the one located in Bad Aibling and uh, the third one in Aibling. Fertig. This is comes to the last. All right. So, funktioniert das jetzt? Ja, so. All right. Yes. Es geht mit dem Mausrad auch. Also, das ist nicht you can also use the This here is not so clear. Status, so network. we have Tire B status. It's uh, called computer network. In computer network operations. operations. So it means they cooperate um, in their computer network corporations or operations. So that's what we could find in these slides. And this is uh, really worrying me because it's uh, it can clearly only be used or done to attack other states' uh, intelligence. So since Austria is a neutral state, um, we shouldn't be allowed to do that. We have a neutral. Um, contract with all these countries, uh, Europe and in Asia, we considered a neutral state in, in most of the world, and now we're damaging this 
uh, are we breaking the law um, because of the Americans forcing us or getting us into trouble? And in the end, we are the ones that are breaking the law, even though they are clearly building all these stations. All right. Now, we'll, get, we'll just give you some contact details and we'll go straight over the question and answer section. You can reach me here. And? Wer Fotos haben will? If you want to have photos. Uh, I talked to my company and most of them can be are available under Creative Commons. And you can, you're free to share it under Creative Commons, including the pictures. So please clap the Aus for the Austrians and their... So, haben wir's gleich. Ah, da. Nein. One too far. All right, here we go. Yep. Da. All right. Also, die zugehörigen so, Artikel finden Sie da oben. You can find all the articles um, das werden ein paar von I talked kennen. about. Und hier gibt es ein Upload-Form. I also have an Upload-Form. Fast alle Fotos kamen darüber rein. And uh, all of the photos pretty much were uploaded using this form. Uh, here's some keys and um, the slides are already online, I just have to unlock them. Alright, we probably shouldn't overdo this for too long, so um, just one, two minutes of questions. Are there any like really burning questions? Alright, please go to microphone number two. Um, all right, I just wanted to point out that in Vienna, the OPEC of the uh, oil producing countries also have a, has a location there. Have you thought about other locations, for example, the Stifts Barracks or under other locations where the, the Euro Austrians might be helping? I need more crowdsourcing support. I'm just one person and I would love to look at these places. And uh, from now on, before uh, everybody's leaving, now we're getting into measuring and um, be prepared. I'll be back with actually measurement results. But the good and order mal aus dem Internet, where the sind haben es nicht so einfach. Signal Angel, could you? There's a question from the IRC. Well, have you ever tried to use infrared camera for these pictures and to? Uh, we haven't tried it yet, and um, the long answer is um, the last time a journalist tried this, um, there was the Americans reacted rather quickly uh, using and after three weeks, all of a sudden they had an anti-tempest cover for these um, boxes. Okay, then we have one question and the rest of the All right, last question. I ask you before the question, if you go, please take your flasches with. We have yesterday at least two flasches here. Please, we are today in the morning. Please take your flasches with. There is a drop-off point. Please make sure to take home your bottles because yesterday we had to remove three crates of them. Please make sure to take home your bottles because yesterday we had to remove three crates of them. All right, regarding the ICD tower, couldn't it be that other states are also doing defense there and therefore they uh, irradiate in that direction, therefore there's no mobile phone reception? That's a really good point. It's also, you could also see it the other way. They're pretty much uh, out there in the open and it could also just be possible that other nations just is pissed and then they uh, aim all these signals towards that point and that's a really good point I almost forgot to mention it uh, it could also be it as long as they think they can play war on our networks and on our bands uh, I'll be there watching
Every information that's leaked to the um, publicity will um, make it m more and more financially um, costly.